meet you again, Robin. How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. <laughs> it's going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I, I mean, I'm not one of those long living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? <laughs> I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin! I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. And I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. But in reality, she's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? However... The paradise in our dreams. It doesn't have to end. No. And the paradise we yearn for... ...shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. person here. What an honor. You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. Uh, with little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations, especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said... with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Pentagoni? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. Heart 
changing. I hope the family has been able to help you. They have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support devices in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. My true appearance. Yeah. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape. Right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise, and I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> now I envy those everlasting things. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even this sweet dream has its limitations. And while it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain in reality. There will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. Enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. You should be thinking. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family. And it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> Do you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, Chicken Wing Boy. But I'm pretty sure Lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Master. Leave now. 
or the family won't tolerate you anymore. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? <sighs> well, I've done my part. And now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. And it'll be thrilling. Bang! I heard a raven cawing in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. But when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams... It shouldn't be like this. Panacone is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality, or bring true happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but even without Panacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now... He is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future? Or is it taking it away from them? Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds, because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah. We took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers. And later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky. Even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. 
That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the Harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher Wood gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon... Dominicus, the harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then... I would summon the Harmonious Choir, too. Don't you... have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that... it includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. our performance, so that both our wishes come true through the power of the Harmonious Choir. It's a deal, then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you'll have to become a star first. back sooner than I thought. Any results? Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. But the path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you 
have the numbers. And in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Got any more encouraging words? As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals and won't grant us an upper hand. Hanakoni is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the families got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most, and since it's the key to stabilizing the Sweet Dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight, and if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. Hmm. So, no one's gonna say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. in these festivity auditions. <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along, but now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. So they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt, set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow March's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I'm afraid I won't have the time. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is... All down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out.
Excuse me, you four. What are you hoping to get out of all this? As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you buy for the crown. Head is hard as steel. Brother Lance Focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't all have to be winners. But if we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. People are pouring in. Kind of feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. <laughs> make way. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soul Glad's factory, Hyteen Lee. My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Hiniko, a nameless from the Astral Express, and these are my companions. Ahem, <clears throat> don't you guys need to hide your identities? Put it anyways. Pentacony is plastered with our posters. Because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. My four friends, come with me. reminds me of the grand occasion when Penacony was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. 
I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentecost. Now, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? Blazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Hello, everyone! Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speed run world record! Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Fire? I hope that by the end of this journey. Everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hope for. Ah, <laughs> a wonderful wish! Miss Kimiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words, but full of force. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Sports Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long, and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me! Let's do it! Alright, I don't have a problem with that. Split into the assigned groups, then. Let's not waste time. Enterprise's 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, Dream Play Fantasia! In this stage, you can choose between two challenges, the School of Acting or School of Action. In the School of Acting challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action Challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Now, make your choice.
to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, The Watchmaker, and depict various stories from Penacoli's era of pioneering. Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge to tears. <sighs> Like he wasn't even acting at all. <laughs> we are running out of time, so let's get this over with quickly. Your screen partner is conversely very enthusiastic. Now, young lady, you will say... moment. Your partner yet gazes into the sky, both her eyes closed. The raindrops fall, blurring her vision, and she tragically says... Uh, perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Right? Fantastic! Both of you have an incredibly solid foundation in dialogue delivery. However, minds aren't everything in a performance. We 
Please continue this story on the second stage. Up next, you'll be challenged with a body language test. I hope these tests won't take too long. Here, you two are required to skillfully utilize body language to portray the story context I've laid out for you. Picking up from where we left off, a heavy downpour saves you both stranded in the desert. This rain quenches the anger in your heart. You look to your companion, now completely devoid of fighting spirit, wanting to comfort her. At this moment, what should you do to make her laugh? Companion sees you rolling about in the sand and thinks about the arduous obstacles along this journey. She can't help but let loose a laugh, rekindling hope in her heart. And so this girl... I'm... gonna get back on my feet and keep moving forward. A tug at the heartstrings! The story continues to develop. The heavy rain leads you both to sense a business opportunity. So you start venturing into the umbrella industry. But just as the business begins to pick up, competitors start flooding the market with low-priced goods, squeezing your market share. You have no choice. The goods you stockpiled at high prices have to be sold at a loss. This is a pretty self-destructive move, which drives your business to the brink of bankruptcy. At this moment, what would you, who refuses to admit defeat, decide to do? It's a pity your friend does not agree. Seeing that you're up to your eyeballs in debt, she sees nothing but despair in her future. And then... Uh, I leave Penicone in utter disappointment! Is that okay? Of course! Absolutely! I was this close to tears! Both of you possess exceptional acting talent. However, the true test is yet to come. You're about to encounter the harshest judge this show has ever seen. You'll need to rely on perfect performances if you want to win them over. Encountered were all from the film 
once upon a time in dreams. Two companions arrive on Panacone with nothing but a dream. Their desire for achievement is met with continuous setbacks. Ultimately, one continues on, despite spiraling into debt, while the other concedes defeat and leaves. Many years later, their paths cross once more in the thriving Penacone. Yet, they refuse to acknowledge each other because... of a revitalized Penacony. The joy of reunion mixes with the sorrow of past separation, the awkwardness of being strangers, and the shyness of a long-awaited encounter, all converging at this very moment. Give it a shot. Try and convey this bittersweet scene to me. Bring it to life with precise and emotive acting. performance is far from satisfactory. of you for clearing the stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the time. You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. <laughs> that red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scotch Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! You have the option to choose Gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or Time, where you'll face Clucky's trial. And now, make your choice! 